Hey guys, welcome back. Yes, I realize it has been forever since I posted a video and it's probably been two inches. I've been keeping in touch with some of you guys on Instagram, uh, was getting YouTube comments and stuff like that. Everybody was asking, dude, where are you at? Are you still, are you still with us? What's going on? So I'm still here, but work has kept me busy ranching kept me busy and yes I was lazy filming there I do agree and then I was really waiting for this guy up here and uh, I probably ordered this early in the year I think it might have been February March time frame something like this let's see Desert Tech MDRX the Bullpup 308 this thing was supposed to come in over a month ago I mean yes COVID and supply chain issues so Desert Tech has been having some trouble there uh, getting these rifles out but then at some point we had a commitment yes we're getting it in a few weeks and so forth well that didn't happen I was supposed to get it on Monday this week today's Friday and if I look at my FedEx app uh, so it's been in my hometown here since Monday it's been saying in transit since Monday I was sitting on some random truck somewhere uh, and then yesterday, Thursday, it was saying on FedEx ve uh, vehicle for delivery uh, never showed up. Uh, called them again today, now they're saying it should be coming today, but the FedEx ground truck also went already through and I talked to the guy and he's like, yeah, I don't have your package. So I don't know if it's going to show up today or not, but um, I'll be heading out here later today to the ranch. Uh, Lauren's going to stay here, hold down the fort, prep for Christmas coming up and then also look out for that FedEx guy because I do want this rifle. Um, that would, was supposed to be my next video and I was supposed to film basically either today or tomorrow. So this might not happen this weekend. So I'm going to get you guys an update though because we had such a long, long time frame. So let's run you guys through some stuff. And there's some videos and some clips here I just can't neatly fit into the storylines I'm gonna just roll some of this right now starting with and somebody was asking what happened to that little piggy from two videos ago he said you would take in and Lauren wanted to have as a pet oh, I, I thought it was a bad idea I said it was a bad idea it turned out it was a bad idea so let's roll that clip right now because we let it go and uh, gave it another chance as the bond surviving pick of his group we made a decision on little pig uh, because we really don't have you don't have to set up to keep a pig around here. You can't just leave it with the goats. Even after we would train it and tame it and stuff, uh, it doesn't doesn't eat grass or brush, so it always needs to be fed. And uh, we can also not have it at home. So we're gonna give this pig a fighting chance, and it gets released. Hi right, boys, boys. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> now since then, I had my folks from Germany visit. They were actually staying with us for three weeks. My dad built what I would probably call a bushcraft kind of shelter for the donkeys, which he enjoyed building and he did a fantastic job here. Opa here built this cool, what I call the donkey house. But it's really more than that. I would call it even the guest house. 
Uh, so it's like, I would say probably like bushcraft stuff, right? Uh, I used all kinds of uh, chopped down branches and trees and stuff to get the structure in place. There's a uh, tarp on top. Um, he put some cardboard boxes underneath just to keep the tarp away from the from the wood so it doesn't uh, deteriorate as as fast. But yeah, he cleaned out all that bottom part of the cedar tree. I think there's a uh, there's a mesquite in there somewhere too. But that's the donkey house now. So pretty neat. We planted uh, about 16 trees or so. I think six live oaks, two red oaks, Texas red oaks. Uh, we planted three crepe myrtles, two American sycamores, and then two bald cypress trees. I planted some chestnut trees, I planted more persimmon trees. Um, I now have another uh, box with me of seedlings for um, water oaks. So I'm, I'm investing quite a bit in trees. Anyways, um, that's probably some of the wrap up from the ranch. Except for one more thing, I've been trying to go after some deer. I bought this place for hunting, for the family to enjoy, for my kids to eventually grow up hunting. We put up a tree stand uh, in the wooded area of my place. Eric and I sat in a tree stand uh, one evening waiting for some deer to come in with a bow actually, so he had a bow. He's doing a fantastic job shooting that bow. Uh, so now we are in the, in the tree stand. I have my old Parker Wildfire Extreme. I think it's at least 10 years old, that bow. Be in the tree stand. So the theater is like 12 yards away. We're sitting basically right on top of it. And yes, we had some deer come in. They looked up at us, but that wasn't too bad. That buck. We had a buck come in, he looked up. He didn't care. The doe on the other side, that was a doe. A few weeks back she came in, she looked up and she knew there's something going on. And we don't have any cover around us, anything, it's pretty open. But yeah, the, the few bucks which came in, they, they didn't really figure out what's going on here. And then the pigs came out in from uh, from over there, the tree line. I have another feeder, like this direction back here. It's a little bit to the left of me. That feeder is only like 100 yards or something. And uh, But that feeder has a fence around it so that the, the pigs can get in, but the deer can in, get in. So the pigs usually come in over there, stop there for a little bit. See if there's any corn outside of the fence, and then they come in here. Sitting in the tree stand, the deer feeder is about 12 yards in front of us. I think we're in a 12 foot, 14 foot kind of tree stand, and uh, it's getting dark. Deer didn't show up. All of a sudden, the pigs come in though. The moonlight is bright enough so we can actually see them coming in. I give Eric my little headlamp, set it to green, and I told him before hey, if they come in, turn the headlamp on, start dropping it down from the top. So you don't turn the light on, like suddenly on them and they get spooked, but drop it down. Yeah, that was the plan. I'm gonna shoot the biggest pig I see. So I'm pulling back. Eric turns on the light, has the headlamp right here, shines me directly in the face. So I'm blinded at this point. And then he drops it down. My vision comes back. My pins are lit up by the light I have on there but my uh, peep side. It's blue and doesn't really have anything to make it more visible, so it's hard to see, but I let that, that arrow fly and I hit something. I don't know if it was the ground, if it was a pig, there was no squealing or nothing. All the pigs all of a sudden run. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? Like, they, you would expect you shoot a pig with a bow, they should be squealing. And I haven't shot a big pig with a bow to be, before, to be honest. Small pigs, and there was lots of squealing. So, we go down after a few minutes, look around, and I find this broken arrow on the ground. So the front third is broken off. On the blood ring, the white ring around the, the arrow, you can see bright and bubbly blood. So I knew there was a lung shot somewhere. Long story short, we look around, find the big boar, the two inch cut on the high, high on his shoulder, and uh, the arrow is somewhere in there because it didn't go through. So next day I come out, 
go after this, look at this pick again, basically. I left it like very, very short at where I pulled it out. And um, to look for my broadhead, I wanted to see like, where did it go? Like, and I wanted the broadhead back. So I opened it up, that broadhead, that it was a rage chisel, two inch, two blade, went straight into the heart and parked itself in the heart. It wasn't a shot through the heart, it was a shot into the heart and not any further. So it parked itself in there. But now back to the Desert Tech MDX. My plan for that is, since it is a pretty short platform, keep it as short as I can. And speaking of can, what suppressor are we going to put on there? Available to me right now would be the Rugged Micro 30, which is available in a short configuration. It's about yay short. So this one could go on there, or we go with the Rugged Radiant 762. It has a short configuration too. I think it's slightly longer than the Micro 30, but definitely lighter. And sound suppression wise, well, we're going to test that. But that's my plan for now. Take these two suppressors, shoot them with the MDX. Which one does feel better? Because this one is heavier. Uh, I never shot a bullpup before, so I don't know how balanced that rifle is. And then we pick the right suppressor for it. So that's the plan. I'm gonna add a probably a thermal on top because I do want to take this hawk hunting. Um, probably going with the Thor 4640, uh, two and a half for 25, or the Thor 4. 384 2x8, which is also a fantastic um, uh, scope. Uh, the 2 to 2.5 two makes a little bit of difference in field of view. Uh, and the, the 384 has a fantastic picture too. So I might try that one with the Desert Tech. And to wrap up this random video covering random topics uh, related to the MDX, though, I want to build a place out there, a shooting range where I can do things like that in a better, mostly safer way. So right now I don't have a good setup for shooting range. Uh, we have some targets out there, there's a backdrop behind it, but I want something even safer, a better backstop, some, some guardrails and some sides. So I've been taking the uh, John Deere 3025E and I've been moving what feels like to me a ton of dirt. But once the dirt was on one pile, it doesn't look like a ton of dirt. So the bucket in the 325E is not the biggest. I actually don't know what the volume is in this thing. It can be more than maybe half a yard or something, if at all. So I'll be continuing doing that because I'm not done yet. I did buy a trailer uh, because eventually I'm going to have to take this tractor also to get serviced. So I went to a dealer here and around the corner and bought a Big Tex 10PI. It's an 18 footer, 82 inches wide. Will be good to haul the tractor, but also I'm getting railroad ties, hopefully today. We'll use those railroad ties to add some more uh, support on this, on this uh, shooting range on this pile of dirt basically left and right of it. And then I'll see if I put those railroad ties either behind the pile or on the front of the pile, we'll, we'll see. It is getting dark, but I just put it in the ranch and uh, we have our railroad ties, 16, 18, 18. The new trailer working out pretty good. Of course, maybe like 20 minutes after I left at home with the boys, the driver showed up, Desert Tech MDX, has officially landed guys it's just not here right now so but tomorrow i will have it here and then hopefully we take the first few shots the range i'm setting up is like way back in there in the corner tucked into those trees that's where you're gonna put those railroad ties tomorrow and uh shoot a few rounds i did bring that thermal so I could get that mounted tomorrow already. I also have another Holosun 510C, which I could put on top. So we'll figure something out. Did I mention? Oh no. Earlier when I talked to you guys about all those random topics, 
I think I forgot to mention we have two baby goats. Unexpected. Apparently one of the goats we bought earlier this year was already pregnant. And now we have two baby goats. How cool is that? Where are the babies? Right there. Show me your babies, Annie. Show me your babies. Right there. Look at the baby. There it is. Yeah, so those are the baby goats. Hopefully tomorrow. That big buck is gonna walk in. That's our cute farmhouse right here, but hopefully the buck is gonna walk in to this uh, food plot. It's a mix of deer mix, food plot, and then oats. The oats didn't take as good, just most in this side where I started spreading them. There's some other stuff in here. But yeah, I, uh, I saw him. I have a camera on this tree back here and I saw him at least once in this field just the other day at 9 a.m. How nice would that be to just sit on the back porch here and uh, just take the deer from the back porch. It's weirdly warm today. It's still like 80 degrees right now. It's December 10th. Crazy. Alright, well, I'm gonna unload. The kids are already in the goat pen and are playing around, but I'm sure they'll be eaten up by mosquitoes here pretty quick. So, but tomorrow is gonna be supposed to cool off, and I'm hoping that we finally have some fall, winterish weather here. It's been, yeah, just typical Texas. You know, look at the at your watch, see what what season we have. All right, see you guys tomorrow morning probably. Get some shooting range stuff happening and maybe we'll shoot a buck tomorrow. Crossing fingers. See ya.